Hi, I'm Aki Kareem, um, boxing press dude um, with a YouTube channel called Chaos Boxing. Um, but this particular video is for realcombatmedia.com and it's an interesting one. It's about David Hay versus Tony Bellew. Now, apparently this has been signed, sealed and delivered for the 3rd of March um, of next year, 2017, at the O2 Arena in London. And I'm not going to make any bones about this. I am a Tony Bellew fan. Um, you know, obviously, I've done interviews with his trainer, Dave Coldwell, which you can catch on Chaos Boxing. Um, I'm friendly with his corner man um, and legend of the sport, Kerry Kays. And be under no under illusion, I'm a big Tony Bellew fan and I want him to win this fight. But I'm going to try and take all that sort of stuff out of this and do an objective piece for you here. Let's just look at Tony Bellew's record firstly. He's got 28 wins. Um, 18 KOs. Um, he's lost twice and only once by KO. That was to Adonis Stevenson uh, at light heavyweight. Uh, yeah, light heavyweight. Um, so let's talk about his power first of all. Tony Bellew has got power. He's always had power through the amateurs, through the, coming up the weight classes. Um, at light heavyweight, you know, he, he put away some really good fighters. Um, but since he stepped up to cruiserweight, I think his power's really started to show. So he's one of these fighters that has taken his power with him. His uh, last two fights, in particular, BJ Flores, where he actually overwhelmed BJ Flores with just combination power punches. Uh, it was a dangerous tactic, to be fair. Could have got caught in an exchange, but, you know, that's what we love about Tony Bellew. Exciting to watch. Um, the one before that, Makabu, um, at Goodison Park. Wow. What a night that was. The, the left hook that put Makabu away in the third round is one of the most chilling left hooks I've ever seen. Okay, It's up there with the knockouts I love, like Botha and Tyson, uh, Lennox Lewis, Rackman in the second fight. It was up there, you know, big, booming left hand on the point of the chin in an exchange. Beautiful. Tony Bellew has got power, okay? Um, Let's talk about the fact that he can box, right? He's got a good amateur pedigree. Um, but also, if you look in the professional ranks, if you look at three fights in particular, his rematch with Nathan Cleverley, his rematch with Ovo McKenzie, and the fight with Isaac Chalemba, where he had a bad cut and he was protecting his cut. In those three fights against dangerous punchers, especially in Ovo McKenzie, um, he really showed he could box. Kept it long, very good jab good movement, didn't get involved in unnecessary exchanges, um, very tight off the clinch, very good footwork, and he proved he could box. He is not just a banger, Tony Bell. He's not just a mouth. A lot of people think he's just a mouth. He's not. He's a good, well-rounded fighter. Um, his chin, of course, has been called into question a few times at various different weights. Um, I mean, Lenenga um, Mock was one guy who, no, that was at David Hay, actually. Um, he's been caught by, who's been caught by? He's been caught by people like Makabu himself, put him down. Uh, of course, Adonis Stevenson over McKenzie put him down. And he's been in trouble a couple of times and wobbled in various different fights. His chin is the one thing that worries me about this fight. Um, yeah, but at the end of the day, he's six foot three, which is the same height as David Hay. Um, and he's got a lot of assets and facets to his game. Um, I'm hoping he's going to weigh in at least 15 stone for this fight, because from what I'm hearing, it's just a heavyweight. There's not even a catch weight of 210 pounds, which was initially sort of talked about. It's going to be at heavyweight. Um, we'll touch on David Hay for a second. 28 fights, same amount of fights as Tony Bellew. So in terms of experience, there's not a massive difference. Of course, the, the level of opposition has been different. We'll go into that. 26 of the 28 wins have come by knockout, though. That's, the, that's a key factor. He's lost twice, once by knockout, and that was by Manchester's very own Carl Thompson. Um, but let's look, let's look at the facts here about David A. His last two fights, Arnold Gergei, right? And Mark Demoria, no disrespect. Listen, I don't disrespect any fighters, but David A summed it up quite nicely after the belly, after the Flores fight, when he said they're basically working the doors and all this sort of stuff. They weren't. I don't want to be disrespectful, but they just weren't. Uh, they, they shouldn't have been in the ring with David A. Okay, that's all I'll say. They shouldn't be in the ring with him. His um, most notable fight before that was against Derek Chisora, but that was in 2014. So we're talking about, by the time they fight, we're talking about three years 
away from real elite competition. And don't forget, Tony Bellew is the cruiserweight champ, right? He's a WBC champion and he's come on a lot um, in the last few years. Um, of course, David Hayes is going to be the more natural at heavyweight. He's been campaigning at heavyweight for a number of years now. Uh, and I suspect he'll come in at at least 16 stone at least, you know, but he'll need to take a little bit of muscle off if he's going to fight Tony Bellew. Um, you know, he has looked a bit too muscled in his last two fights for me, but then again, he's still very quick with it. Um, he's also matured a lot um, with his fighting style. At first, when you look at this fight, you think it just spells re uh, mismatch, right? The first time you look at this fight. But let's delve into it a little bit more. David Hay has lost, um, and in a notable loss against Carl Thompson, he gassed out badly, right? He fired pulsating power shots at Carl Thompson in the first couple of rounds, especially in the first round and second round. Go and watch that fight. Um, a friend of mine, Chris Maylott, has done a brilliant interview with Carl Thompson for British Boxers website. Go and check that out on YouTube and watch what Carl Thompson says about that. He, he dragged David Hay into an uncomfortable place where he actually, his stamina was tested. And what we found out in that fight was that David Hay doesn't have the best engine in the world, even though he's a ferocious puncher. What happens if he doesn't get Tony Bellew out of there in the first four or five rounds? Could be interesting. Um, the Chisora fight, Derek Chisora was starting to catch up with David Hay in the fourth and fifth until David Hay landed his trademark beautiful, beautiful power punches. The Klitschko fight, again, David Hay was quite ineffectual from round nine onwards because he was tired and he was getting pressed and he was getting worked. That's the secret and key to beating David Hay. You've got to make him work. He's a very intelligent fighter. He fights in spells now. He fights in bursts, a bit like Mayweather. You know, he, he takes his time, uses the time well to rest, and then bang, explodes with powerful, powerful shots. And when he gets you hurt, he commits and he will finish your ass. Okay, he will finish you. He's also taken out, clean out some great fighters at heavyweight, you know, I mean, um, people like Monty Barrett, people like uh, John Ruiz. I know John Ruiz was a bit old at the time, but you know, you know what I mean, you know, people have been there at world level. Um, and he's looked very good, right? You can't hate on David Hayes' boxing attributes. Fast, clever thinker, but a great trainer, cannot hate on, on Shane McGuigan. Shane McGuigan is a top trainer, especially with power punches. That's his, that's his meat. He loves that, working with power punches. Um, and look, if Tony Bell is going to have a chance in this fight, he's going to need to weather an early storm. He's going to need to make sure he can take the first few power punches. I mean, he's not used to taking punches off these big guys. And if he can weather that storm, then he's got a chance. Um, but you know, the smart money, I'm afraid, is on, is on David Hay. And, and, and I hate to say it because I love Tony Bellew. I just love his passion. I love everything about him. I love Scousers in general. Uh, those of you that are watching this from America, Scousers is someone from Liverpool. Um, and I just, I just like what he brings to the table. And, and believe you me, and, I, and I've spent a lot of time with him in, around um, camps leading up to fights, especially with the Flores fight. He's not what people make him out to be. He's a very nice guy. And having spoken with Kerry Case, who's very close to Tony Bellew, Kerry's told me he's a really genuinely nice guy, a family man, a humble man. It's kind of a persona he puts on. And believe me, this, this build-up, is going to be fantastic for this fight. Um, but if we're looking at technical aspects here, Tony Bellew is the type of guy that likes to trade. If he trades with David Hayes, he's going to go to sleep. Um, and I hate to say it, unless he can catch him first, okay? Tony Bellew carries dynamite power himself, especially in the left hook, and he sets it up. Right hand, left hook. The right hand he throws sometimes is almost like a throwaway right hand. Throws it like, and bang, comes back with the left hook. And if he can catch David Hay with that, that's what I'm praying for, then we could be in for some fireworks. But realistically, when he throws those shots, he takes too many risks. He did it against uh, Makabu. He did it against BJ Flores. His legs came square and he just relied on his power. If he fights like that against David Hay, David Hay, unfortunately, is going to decapitate him. Um, David Hay has not had the greatest last few years. Obviously, he was out with an injury and he's not had elite caliber opposition. But if you look at the names he's been in with, he's the guy really who brings the sort of, um, he brings the ammunition to the gunfight in, in many ways. 
he's very heavy handed, but he's not crude, right? He sets his punches up well and he sets traps. And if you look at the way he finished off Mark Damori, the way he dipped, he, he, he moved to draw a jab, he then dipped under the jab and threw the right hand over the top. And it's a very, it's a beautiful move. In fact, it's similar to the move Anthony Joshua used against um, Charles Martin. Now look, let's just boil it down right here for you. I personally think if I had to put my mortgage and house on it, I'd have to put my mortgage and house on David Hay knocking out Tony Bellew inside the first four or five rounds. But I'm an optimist and I just hope Tony Bellew can find the passion and grit and determination to beat David Hay. If David Hay is dragged into a dogfight, it's proved in the past that when he's dragged into that horrible place, he falls apart. And we know Tony Bellew's got heart, but as a boxing you know, reporter, I've got to be honest, I think David Hay wins this fight. I think he wins by knockout. There you go.